Okay, folks, well, welcome to Coffee with Job on Tuesday. We're going to take some time over the next few days looking just at a few verses at the end of chapter 19, what I consider to be one of the most extraordinary statements of faith that you will ever hear. Um, I keep a diary. We're going to look at the final words in Job 19, 23 and 24, we read this. Oh, that my words were recorded, that were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in rock forever. Well, I like a, a solid diary and I like a real pen, an ink pen. I really need to get a decent ink pen though. I, I don't know, it's just something different about than typing. I've kept a diary since I was a teenager. Um, sometimes it's got, I've gone months without doing it. Uh, my diary is not written for anybody. It's, you're not going to get the published diary of David Robertson. Um, I would be so embarrassed by that. I look back over stuff if five years ago and think, how could I be such an idiot? And in five years' time, I'll probably look back and say the same thing. But Job's different. Job here wants his words to be put on a rock, put on a headstone, if you like. Now, why is that? Why is that so important to him? Because he's being accused uh, and he wants his final words to um, act kind of like a vindication, I think. So, you know, I was thinking about people's final words. Uh, Kurt Cobain, it's better to burn out than fade away. Actually, McShane, he's, he's citing Robert Murray McShane, although I'm sure he'd never heard of Robert Murray McShane. George Best, don't die like I did. Yeah, well, that's probably good advice. Or Isadora Duncan, and forgive me if you're French. Uh, adieu, mes amis. Je vois à la gl gloire. I'm goodbye. Farewell, friends. I'm going to glory. Uh, no, those are not bad final words. I mean, what would you want your final words to be? You know, my dad, uh, we're thinking about what we put on his headstone. What would you want on your headstone? The, the saying is, you know, live as so as to be missed, or live and die so as to be missed. Well, Job's dying, so he thinks. He doesn't want his friends to put on his headstone, if you like, here lies a man with unconfessed sin who died because he didn't confess his sin or because he was being punished by God. He has he said to God to have mercy on him, and then this whole section is a magnificent burst of faith. And part of this faith is, he's saying, well, God has accused me and God has attacked me, and that's wrong. But he said that, and although he still thinks that, he said, I want to appear before God, almost like in God's courtroom. He wants his words to be engraved in rock forever, but he, he wants to move and, and as we'll see, he's going to move from having a memorial to actually seeing God. That's his great hope. That's his great longing. Now, here's what I find really, really wonderful about all of this. Far more than being engraved on a rock somewhere in the Middle East, Job's words are in this book. And here we are in the 21st century discussing them thinking about them 4,000 years later. It's just incredible. Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. You may think a, a lot of the stuff you do today will be path, passing, ethereal, temporal. Looking at this never is. This is the word of God for us. In, in Australia, we have Uluru or Ayers Rock. It's seen to be almost like as though it's eternal. It'll pass away. But God's word will never pass away. When I write things down in, in this diary, I'm, you know, it's not forever. I, my diaries will be burnt, I hope, when I'm, when I'm gone. I, I, why do I do it? I do it to help me think through things. But God's word, God's word is forever. And you can be sure and certain of that. 
So come back tomorrow and we'll see how God's word isn't just doesn't end with God's word. God's word points to the word, Jesus Christ. Uh, hopefully see you then. I hope you have a great day. Bye.